Perhaps, unfortunately, his much-documented move from Barcelona to Real Madrid would go down as one of the most controversial transfers in the history of football. But in amongst the headlining controversies, Louis was also able to claim his fair share of silverware, including the UEFA Champions League and the FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001. Louis Filipe Madeira Cayero was born on November 4, 1972, in the Portuguese city of Almada. Located on the west coast of the Mediterranean country, Almada is only a short ferry trip away from Portugal's capital, Lisbon, and is home to over 160,000 residents. Although other sports are played throughout the country, football, since its introduction in the late 19th century, is by far the most popular. Despite coming close to major victories over the years, Portugal has yet to win a major international tournament. Luis Figo's incredible football career began at the small Uneo Football Clube, located in the Almada municipality of Coba da Pidade. While he was there, his prodigious talent was spotted by Sporting Clube de Portugal, more commonly known as Sporting Lisbon. Renowned for its football department and ability to mould young athletes into world champions, Louis could not have been in better hands. With 18 national championships and 15 national cups to its name, Sporting CP is one of the most successful clubs in Europe, although they have struggled to find their best form in recent years. Upon his arrival at Sporting in the late 80s, Figo didn't disappoint his believers. He won his first senior cap for the famous Portuguese club at the age of 17 and went on to appear another 136 times, scoring 16 goals and setting up countless others. With his deadly crosses and precision passing starting to catch the eye of the big European clubs, the 5 foot 11 inch attacking midfielder finished up at Sporting in 1995 after six impressive years. During his final season with the club, he helped them claim the Cup of Portugal and the Portuguese Super Cup. In 1995, Luis Figo was transferred from Sporting CP to Spanish club Barcelona. There at Camp Nou, under the guidance of coach Johan Cruyff, he joined the likes of Albert Ferrer and Joseph Guardiola. The transfer hadn't been all smooth sailing for Luis. After deciding to leave Sporting CP, he'd been all set to play in the Italy's Serie A. Thanks to a bidding war between Juventus and Parma for the Portuguese star. However, after Louis signed with both clubs, he was banned from being transferred to Italy for two years. That left the door open for FC Barcelona, who signed the 23-year-old for around 2.5 million euros. At Barca, his career really started to kick off, and he played a crucial role in Barcelona's run of successes between 1996 and 1999. During that time, the Spanish club won seven titles, including consecutive La Liga crowns, two Copa del Reyes and the Spanish Super Cup, UEFA Cup Winners Cup and the UEFA Super Cup. Then after appearing 249 times and scoring 47 goals for Barca, he left the club in 2000 via a transfer that shook the foundations of Spanish football. Given the drama surrounding his previous transfer, one might have expected his next move to go a little smoother. However, Figo's burgeoning ambition persuaded him to make the risky shift to Barcelona's bitter rivals, Real Madrid. After sealing the transfer deal for a then world record fee of around 42 million euros, he was given a warm reception at the Estadio Bernabeu. Focusing on winning more titles, he did his best to block out the taunts and criticisms of his former Barca supporters and explained why he joined Spain's most successful club. I came to this club to earn even more prestige and to have the opportunity to play and win the European Cup. His signing was the first of many big-name transfers to boost the ranks of Real Madrid over the coming seasons. Then-president Florentino Perez had a dream of creating the most powerful club in history, with all the world's greatest names playing in the same colours. 
Nicknamed the Galacticos, Perez purchased a superstar footballer every summer, breaking all sorts of transfer records as he went on. With no limits on price, he bought Zinedine Zidane for around 52 million euros, and the following summer, he added Ronaldo to the ranks. With so many superstars in the lineup, it became difficult to find a position that suited all the players. In the end, they had no choice but to adapt to new positions. During my career, I've had to adapt myself to different positions, depending on the trainer and the coach. I will play wherever my coach thinks is appropriate. In his first few seasons with Real, Louis continued the great run of success he'd enjoyed at Barcelona. Despite the success, Perez continued to buy players. Now that David has joined us, it makes our team even stronger. And now we have hopes that he would help us to achieve our goals. With his presence, it will be easier for us to win things. And that's what's more important. However, just before Beckham's arrival, Figo and Real had even more to celebrate. We are celebrating Madridism. And like any other party, Real Madrid has always found strength in the various titles that it has achieved. And because of that, it was declared the best club in history. And in this sense, we have a great responsibility. And the players have given all their commitment to this club. No doubt winning the UEFA Champions League would be the highlight of Figo's time at Real where he claimed a total of seven titles. However, after 239 games, he left Spain for Italy and joined Inter Milan in 2005. His signing made an immediate impact with Louis leading his new club to the Serie A title in 2005-2006. It is a great celebration and a great joy. I would have been even happier if we would have won the last match. It would have been wonderful. This is the fulfillment of a great championship. Tonight will be a fantastic evening. The victory brought wild celebrations to the streets of Milan, and the fans couldn't have been happier. We have really deserved it after all these victories. We too deserve to be happy once in a while, don't we? The title was the club's first since 1988-1989 and the fans hoped they wouldn't have to wait as long for the next one. It is a great emotion. Let's hope this is just the first one. But we will win loyally, not by stealing. Luckily for Figo and the fans, the wait was mercifully short. In his four seasons with Inter, they won four consecutive Serie A titles. They also took out the Italian Cup in 2006 and the Italian Super Cup in 2005, 2006 and 2008. In 2007, it looked like Figo would be leaving Inter after his contract expired. There were rumours that he would join Saudi Arabian club Al Ittihad. The deal never eventuated and he resigned from Milan. Then in 2009, he announced his retirement from football. Luis Figo became a national hero at a young age. The Portuguese star exploded onto the international scene by winning the FIFA World Youth Championship in 1991. His brilliance throughout the tournament won him his first senior cap that same year. 
known as the leader of Portugal's golden generation with Nuno Gomes. At close second, the football legend had to wait until 1996 to play in his first international tournament. Euro 1996 gave the young star a chance to test his skills against some of the world's greatest footballing nations. After going through undefeated in group stage, Portugal were knocked out in the quarterfinals and young Figo failed to make an impact. It wasn't until four years later, at Euro 2000, that he really started to mix it with the world's best. In the tournament hosted by Belgium and the Netherlands, he was a dominant force in the side, and along with teammate Nuno Gomes, he was named in the UEFA team of the tournament. 2002 saw Louis play in his first World Cup. Unfortunately, however, it was a tournament that he and Portugal would rather forget, as they failed to pass the group stage. Euro 2004 gave Portugal, the hosts of the tournament, the perfect opportunity to redeem themselves. Vigo was on top of his game, and Portugal, thanks to a young gun Cristiano Ronaldo, made it through to the final. Unfortunately, they lost 1-0 in an epic game against Greece. Portugal dominated the match with 58% of the possession and with 12 more shots on goal. However, they couldn't manage to find the back of the net. Figo's last international tournament would be the 2006 FIFA World Cup. With high hopes going into the cup, he hoped that a change of jersey might change their luck. I hope that the new jerseys will be translated into a victory. I think that's the thought of all players and all Portuguese. Portugal finished the tournament in fourth place. Following the World Cup, after playing 127 times for his country, Luis Figo announced his retirement from international football. Off the pitch, Figo has lived most of his life away from the headlines. He's married to Swedish model Helen Sveden, whom he met in 1996 at a Jaquin Cortes show in Barcelona. They have three daughters together, Daniela, born in 1999, Martina, born in 2002, and Stella, born in 2004. Currently residing in Milan, he and Helen are expecting their fourth child. Figo has also been tireless in his charity efforts, raising money for those in need via celebrity football matches. Since 2003, he has hosted an annual charity match in his home country. The Portuguese legend is always grateful for the support of fellow footballers who offer their time to help out. I want to thank everyone that collaborated in this event from the beginning. The people that worked so this was possible. The tireless players that could be here and the coaches. In 2010, he took part in a charity match that raised money for those affected by the Haiti earthquake. The tragedy, which measured at a catastrophic magnitude of 7.0, hit Haiti on January 12 and left most of the country in ruins. An estimated 200,000 people were killed by the earthquake and another 300,000 were injured. It was also reported that 250,000 homes and 30,000 commercial buildings were severely damaged by the tremor. As money was being raised all around the globe, the United Nations Development Program, together with Portuguese club Benfica, organized the match in late January. Alongside Figo, stars such as Kaka, Robert Perez, Zinedine Zidane and Thierry Henry took to the pitch in a game that ended 3-3. Throughout his career, Louis Figo has played against and alongside some of the greatest players of the modern era. In particular, his time spent at Real Madrid saw the attacking midfielder mix it with the likes of Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo and David Beckham. Touted as the next big thing to come out of England, Bex arrived at Real Madrid with a world of expectation on his shoulders. After signing with the club in 2003, 
for an estimated 35 million euros. He and his number 23 shirt immediately became a fan favourite. Beckham's senior career had started at Manchester United in 1993. He was instrumental in their rise as a powerhouse club throughout the 1990s, claiming 15 titles with the Red Devils. However, on arriving in Spain, he found it difficult to adapt. Well, I think uh, everyone is trying to, to be uh, the more uh, uh, nice as possible for Beckham to uh, feel adapted the more soon as possible a new life and a new club. So maybe because I, I speak a little more English, I talk a little more with him, but uh, I think all the players try to, to, to become adapted the, the more soon as possible to new club and the new life. Unfortunately, Beck struggled to continue the winning vein of form he'd found at Man U, winning just the two titles with Real, including the Supercopa de España in 2003 and the La Liga title in 2006-2007. Cristiano Ronaldo is another superstar that Vigo has had the pleasure of calling a teammate. Ronaldo's short but brilliant career began like Figo's at Sporting CP. There, he was spotted by Manchester United manager Alex Ferguson. Ronaldo was purchased as a replacement for the outgoing Beckham and took little time to find his feet in the EPL. National selection followed shortly after and the deadly combination of Cristiano's youth and Louis' wisdom was extremely successful. Sadly, it was also short-lived, as Figo retired from international football in 2006. I think uh, I make a decision to, to retire in the national team, so right now I don't think about, it, about that. Uh, I have to support them then, uh, out of the pitch, so that is my idea and it's more important right now. However, before his retirement, the pair was largely responsible for Portugal's brilliant run of form between 2004 and 2006. Euro 2004 marked the moment that Cristiano Ronaldo proved to the world that he was the real deal. Still just a teenager, he dazzled his home crowd, scoring twice in his first international tournament. With the brilliant Luis Figo taking Cristiano under his wing, both players were named in the team of the tournament. The 2006 World Cup would be Figo's swan song and the partnership looked set to shine again with Ronnie going into the cup as the second highest goal scorer in FIFA World Cup qualification. The star pair didn't disappoint with Portugal starting off the cup in brilliant form. They finished undefeated in the group stage with Ronaldo scoring twice. In the quarters they defeated England via a penalty shootout with Ronnie scoring the winning penalty. However, in the semi-finals, they lost 1-0 to France and eventually went down 3-1 in the third-place playoff against Germany. Figo was named in the team of the tournament, however Ronaldo missed out. Despite having a brilliant World Cup, his campaign was marred by an incident involving Wayne Rooney in the quarter-finals against England. Following in Figo's footsteps, Ronaldo was transferred to Real Madrid on July 1, 2009 signing a six-year contract that is estimated to be worth 13 million euros per season. Rising from humble beginnings in his hometown of Almada to the very top of the world game, Louis Figo has become one of the best-known footballers on the planet. Although he's now retired from the game, his brilliance on the pitch will forever be remembered. Often compared to the great Eusebio, Figo was renowned for being a gentleman both on and off the field, and his career path provides a shining example for younger players. With a career spanning more than two decades, the famous right winger made his fair share of headlines. No doubt one of his more famous or infamous moments came in 2002, when he returned to Camp Nou a few seasons after his transfer to Real Madrid. While both clubs were happy with the move, the Barcelona fans were far from overjoyed to see their former number one player, the heart and soul of their club, make a pact with the devil, Florentino Perez. In fact, when he returned to Camp Nou in the white strip of Real Madrid, a study by a television station found that the decibels generated by the crowd's whistles and jeers were louder than an aeroplane taking off. On 
On his second appearance for Real at Camp Nou, Barcelona's ground almost had to be closed. All kinds of objects, including a pig's head, were thrown at Figo, who was also taunted with insults. One such insult, Pesatero, which roughly translates to money whore, reverberated around the stadium during the match. But all these distractions failed to put Figo off his game. His ability to stay focused marked him as a true champion and to rub salt into Barcelona's bleeding wounds, he went on to win the European Player of the Year in 2000 and then the FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001. It is this focus and grace under fire that set the perfect example for players like Cristiano Ronaldo. It has also won him the respect and admiration of fans across the globe. During his time at Inter Milan, Figo won the hearts of his Italian fans, who were clearly devastated when he announced his retirement during May 2009, as Inter won the fourth straight Serie A title. During his last match for the Italian club, the crowd gave him a standing ovation, and he was handed the captain's armband as he made his way onto the pitch. To top off a memorable career, he scored from a free kick in extra time. However, it wasn't just the fans who adored him. Players, officials and the media had a lot of respect for the midfielder. This is no more apparent than in the numerous accolades he received over his career. These include being named the Portuguese Footballer of the Year six times and winning the Ballon d'Or in 2000. However, there is no question that being named FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001 was the pinnacle of his glittering career. Although he hasn't won any senior international tournaments, his success at club level leaves one of the best records in football. He won the league title on eight separate occasions with three different clubs and claimed another 16 trophies, including the UEFA Champions League in 2002. Alongside his faultless on-field record, his famous generosity off the pitch and willingness to give back to the fans makes Louis Figo a shining example of his footballing generation. One of the greatest players ever to come out of Portugal, he has also earned his place on the list of top players of all time. With Portugal taking part in the 2010 FIFA World Cup, there is no doubt that Figo will be passing on valuable advice in the locker rooms. Thank <laughs> you.